All right, welcome in. Happy Friday here off and running as uh, college basketball conference tournament action already underway here today in a 27 game slate. Uh, many of these games, of course, uh, involving conference tournaments uh, with uh, a lot of mid-major programs here underway. Some uh, tournaments, uh, we are already two, three games into it. We've got, uh, we're just kicking off. A few others. We have the final regular season games coming up this weekend. So needless to say, a lot going on in college hoops. And we've got uh, we got a couple of best bets on today's card. We're going to throw your way. And we'll do it with three of the best at Wager Talk here as double R1L, Steve Merrill in the house. Brian Leonard ready to go here, trying to cash that ticket on UAB yesterday. Uh, and BP who, uh, of course, was on Temple. That didn't work out. Uh, all right, gentlemen, let us uh, see if we can't uh, figure this one out here today with Merrill. We're going to kick it to you here first. Uh, and I, usually uh, I'm shocked that uh, we didn't uh, give way here to the uh, senator from Ohio, uh, but you got two of them on the board here today, Merrill. You're going to give me Ohio at Miami of Ohio here. A bit of a rivalry game maybe here. What are you thinking? Well, first, I thought you meant we had two senators from the state of Ohio named Brian, because we do, technically, even though <laughs> the first senator you're going to see next is now the congressman from Nevada, because he got kicked out of mm -hmm. Ohio. Now, he chose to move Good south. Good point. Good move. Good weather move. But yeah, since I knew Brian Power was going to be on the show today, I was like, for the big game breakdown, I had a choice between the VCU games against Dayton, another Ohio school, I guess, or this game, and I mm -hmm. had to go with this one. And it's apropos that you talk about line moves, because very rarely in college basketball especially do I look to fade what I consider sharp money moves. And I do think the sharp money is on the Ohio Bobcats. They've gone from two and a half up to three and a half, even four at some of the sharper books. But I'm going to fade that here. I'm thinking that's probably Brian Power's money, so I'm not as reluctant to fade it here. I'm going to go with Miami of Ohio for a couple reasons. Um, first of all, we also talked about these second meetings. You know, the word revenge is overused a lot of times, but I do like to dig into the box score when it's a second meeting. And these teams did play just a month ago on February 3rd at Ohio University. And as Brian Power was celebrating all night from that nine-point win as a seven-point favorite, they had a seven-point lead at the half, and they cruised after that. But let's dig into the box score. They win by nine. They hit 15 three-pointers, 52% mm. from three-point range, 15 for 29. Miami of Ohio shot just 39% from the field. They were only seven for 20 from three. Do the math. That's a 24-point edge from three-point range at home, and Ohio U only won by nine. I don't think that's a good sign moving forward. Miami of Ohio got to the free throw line more times on the road. They had less turnovers on the road. Those should be even better at home. And um, it's the last game of the season, the last regular season game, and the last home game as well for Miami of Ohio. And they have a winning record at home, 9-5, respectable. Don't quite understand that money move on the Bobcats here. I think Miami of Ohio is a live dog in this game, plus the 3.5 to plus 4 at 7 o'clock Eastern. All right, there we go. Off and running here with uh, a little bit of a fade of the market uh, move here. And Brian Leonard, former, I'm sorry, former uh, senator from Ohio, now uh, representing uh, Nevada here. <laughs> and uh, you are going to stick to stay out west. And uh, I don't blame you uh, because a pretty interesting one with Boise State taking on. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong Brian. Uh, see, this is what happens when we have double Brian's from Ohio. Uh, now it's Wichita State versus Tulane. That was the game I was talking about. I should have seen the graphic and realized we had the wrong Brian. Uh, that's all right. I'm going to change his name here, Brian, as soon as you're done. Uh, giving us the breakdown of Wichita State and Tulane here tonight, who will eventually win another game, won't they? I didn't realize Louisiana was west of the Mississippi now. I'm going to have to yeah. go to New Orleans. Um, <laughs> Anytime I could get a team who has lost 10 out of 11 games and get them as a favorite, I got to bet them. That's already out. It's a lock. Everybody knows this team's going to win. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. The Shockers are 13 and 17 on the season, but they started the year 7 and 1. Uh, the recent victories over UAB and Rice were the, last, were the first time all season that they've produced back to back victories since November. Uh, they're a team on a one and eight straight up run on the road. They don't play well away from home. And uh, that gives us an advantage here for the Green Wave, who have won four of the last five meetings in this series. So they've matched up very well with the Shockers here. 
Uh, as I mentioned, the interplay, having dropped 10 of 11 games overall, they've been installed as a favorite. And I've been handicapping long enough to know that that's usually a winner when you get a team like that. In fact, the Lions makers uh, put them up at, what, two, two and a half, and now we're up to four. The betting public feels the same way. Uh, at 13 to 16 on the year, you'd think that this would be an important game for the hosts is at senior night, last game of the season, regular season at least. Uh, they have two of the top five scorers in the league, and they like to run and play really hectic type of game. And that's a good matchup against this Wichita State, in my opinion. That should give them their advantage in this one. And I look for the Green Wave to take some victory for the rare time tonight at home in front of the home crowd and the seniors. We'll lay it with Tulane. All right. Looking at Tulane to get it done there. Brian Leonard, formerly the representative from Ohio now of Nevada. Uh, the BP, this ain't going to work uh, with you having the same name. So I'm just going to call you Kyle and we'll end it at that. All right. So from now on here, Kyle, like Lance. Uh, talk to me about I'm, Boise State, San Diego State, if you could. That would be fantastic Kyle. if you can break that down. Kyle. I'll Kyle tell you what, seat. Joe. It's nice, <laughs> Joe. It's nice to see that you're broadcasting from the uh, what is that, the Broadcasting oh! Hall of Fame, just where you belong, yes. there, buddy. He's yeah. in the souvenir right, shop uh, at the Knights game. Yeah. He's stealing yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, make sure oh. yeah, it should charge you double. Anyway, San Diego State, Boise State. Uh, as you know, Joe. Uh, apparently, this year in the Mountain West, home court advantage is worth six points because every time we have these teams in the top tier, it sure seems like the home side is laying at least six. This is a revenge game for the Aztecs. They lost up in Boise on January 20th by just a single point. It was 67-66. And they lost by just a single point despite horrific shooting from three. The Aztecs were 25%, six of 24 from three in that game. They're also coming off a loss earlier this week at UNLV by four, 62-58. to Another disastrous shooting effort on the road by the Aztecs. They missed 23 of their first 25 field goal attempts, uh, Pacific-like numbers there, Joe. And they finished 28.1% overall from the field in that game, trailed by as many as 17. But as I said, they got the final margin within four, despite that kind of horrible shooting, despite the horrible shooting in the first meeting with Boise State. They only lose by one. Now San Diego State's at home. I know consistency on offense is an issue, but they're at home. I expect more than just uh, Ladee to come through here. And Boise State, oh, by the way, off the loss as well, guys, but at home by 10 to Nevada as six-point favorites. Broncos might be ahead uh, of the Aztecs in the conference standings, but depth is a concern for them. It has the metrics, has the Broncos 323rd on the road. That is not good at all. Considering the revenge, considering the home court advantage, I will gladly take the team that is top 10 nationally in adjusted defensive efficiency to win the game. You can lay the points, but I think it's getting a little heavy. If you, if the spread is too much for you, I would suggest money line parlaying this, Joe. I'll get a little creative on the show. Uh, some options for you. Gardner-Webb in the Big South Tournament, where I went with Moorhead State. You can read about why I would parlay San Diego State with Moorhead State on my page right now, wt.buzz backslash BK. They're both uh, those teams lost this week too, in just awful fashion uh, there. And the am I seeing this line move correct at near from six and a half to eight now? So San Diego State getting uh, plenty of love here in the uh, in the marketplace. We'll see how that uh, works out for them here. But we do have, of course, three best bets from these guys coming your way. A quick reminder: uh, if you are joining us here for the First time, we certainly appreciate you hanging with us. Uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, become part of the Wager Talk TV family, as we've got uh, much more content uh, coming your way on all the big games, not just today, but all weekend long. Uh, you can certainly check out all the other big game previews that we have here on the page. Just hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, a thumbs up. We certainly appreciate it as we get ready for some best bets here. And it goes back to the top here and uh, the one and only double R one L Steve Merrill uh, as uh, you're going to look at an interesting game here. Another conference uh, battle here tonight. Merrill, tell the folks what you got rolling on uh, tonight at wagertalk.com and give me the winner of Oral Roberts and South Dakota tonight. 
Yeah, we're going to look at that free play in a moment. I'm laughing because I wore my William & Mary Tribe jacket because, of course, they're uh, they're playing today. Which side's the camera? Brian Power moved the camera on me. And I'm laughing because I'm looking winning. at the Wager Talk Live odd screen right now. I'm such a big fan, Joe. I didn't realize the game had already tipped off. started at 2 o'clock Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Well, play out well, I went from 4.5 to winning. 7 today. It was the only reason I was looking at it. And now it closed 5.5. I don't know if Glasper is playing or not, but the game is live. So I guess I could find out right after the show. Uh, so anyway, anybody in the live chat that wanted my William and Mary pick for today, uh, it ain't happening. Uh, it's in game right now. <laughs> Um, we are going to look at a free play, though, for tonight in college basketball in just a moment. First, I want to let you know I've got a two-for-one combo for Friday night college and pro basketball. One NBA, one college, two strong best bets tonight, and a bonus free play in college hoops, a different free play. I'm going to give you another one in a moment, so check out my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com, for that two-for-one special. Each game is 25. We get them both for 29 and the bonus free late-night college play. And while you're there, SM25 gets you 25% off any access, all access purchase this week and this week only. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, we're going to go down to uh, one of the uh, tournaments that does start tonight. It's the first round in the um, Summit Tournament, and this is taking face, place in Suex Falls in South Dakota. So I do uh, think maybe some people think South Dakota is going to get a little love here, but the betting markets do not agree. And we have seen sharp early money on Oral Roberts, and I agree with that move. This line opened three and a half. It is now up to five across the board at the Wager Talk live odd screen. And I like Oral Roberts for a few reasons. Both of all these teams are both losing teams. They both have sub 500 records. Oral Roberts comes in here in terrible current form. 0 and 7 straight up their last seven, yet they're laying five points. And one of the reasons is they are the better team. And the other thing I'd like to point out is that these conference tournaments are a reset. Teams that have struggled to get a second chance at life, and they often perform well that first game, even the second game. They usually flutter out after that. And I do think that'll be the case with Oral Roberts tonight. And we also get two regular season meetings, so a lot of data to work with here in the box scores to dig into. Back in January, on January 11th, Oral Roberts won easily at home by 18 points. Really nothing misleading about it. They made one extra three-point shot, and they won by 18. They dominated down low from two-point range. In fact, they had a 26-21 to 21 edge, a 10-point edge, from two point range. And then they won a loss rather by one point a few weeks ago on February 24th. And this is also a quick revenge situation, which I like a one point loss in which they blew a six point lead at halftime as a road favorite at South Dakota. And they shot just 26% from three South Dakota shot 39% and only won by a single point on their strong home court. So once again, I like oral Roberts here. I think the box scores back it up. And they continue and they snap that game, seven game losing streak. Take a look at Oral Roberts minus five tonight on the added board. And don't forget two strong best bets one college, one pro, and a bonus free college play for Friday night. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And also click subscribe and hit the bell for instant alerts so you know when my top 25 Saturday college basketball video is posted later tonight on Friday. <laughs> All right, good stuff, Merrill. And uh, the time it took you to uh, break that game down. William and Mary now losing. Uh, so uh, there you go here. Not uh, not <laughs> yeah. a great run there for uh, W&M, uh, but they're only down a point. Plenty of time to I'm go I'm just rooting here. for the CAA in general. Just the CAA yes. in general is my new team. Someone's got to win that conference tournament. Yeah, you got to have the uh, – uh, all right, talk to me, uh, Brian Leonard here. We've got, uh, we've got another best bet here for you, Brian Leonard, and you are uh, going to look there on your old stopping grounds uh, with Ball State and Bowling Green here. Uh, today, talk to me about this plus five. I'm seeing for Ball State. Uh, what do you uh, What are you leaning towards in this matchup? Uh, before we get to uh, the breakdown of the game, I do want to point out that we've only been on for about 20 minutes. We've always got already got references to Moorhead State and Oral Roberts. So the <laughs> spring is in the air. Yeah. <laughs> That's women's we'll teams in South Carolina games. Gamecocks, Brian Leonard. How do you like that? Oh, <laughs> oh we knew it was coming. And Brian you know Power's going to talk Lemoyne in a moment. Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> Loves his we, Dolphins. We're take a look at this Ball State Ball, Bowling Green game, but I do want to point out I've got five plays up today, uh, three plays of college basketball, an NBA, and a play in the NHL. We've won nine of the last eleven days, and we're up over sixty-nine. Uh, net units since November 1st. So it's been very good in everything that we cover. Uh, yeah, you mentioned we're going back to the MAC, my home uh, conference, being an Akron graduate. And now we're going to take a look at the Ball State and Bowling Green game. Home loss revenge for the 15 and 15 mm -hmm. Cardinals. 
who lost to the Falcons 81 to 72 at the end of January. Uh, Ball State is on a five and two straight up running on the road, actually five and one in Mac play on the road. Uh, this team hasn't had much of a home court advantage in league play all year long, but they have played much better ball when they take to the highway and a victory here gives them that winning record in the regular season uh, before the conference tournament. So a lot of teams will look at that and use that for motivation. It could be a, a reason to do that here. Uh, the Falcons of Bowling Green have an 18 and 12 record on the year, but they are on a current four and eight run. They've dropped three of five home games outright as of late. And this is a poor shooting team with a 48.1 effective field goal percentage. Bowling Green had a four game winning streak in this series snapped in that earlier meeting. I look for the Cardinals to make amends on Friday. Not only do I think they're going to cover this spread, I think they win this game outright. Give me Ball State over Bowling Green. All right. Taking the points there uh, with Ball State. Getting it done here. That leaves us, of course, with one more best bet here tonight in a uh, interesting game here. And it seems to be the dogs are barking here, BP, as we've got uh, I know you're on a uh, on a great run now, nine and three, I believe, over the last couple of days. You got a really cool code that you can give out. We'll save uh, folks twenty five percent. So let them know what's locked and loaded on your page at Wager Talk, and give me the winner of Eastern Michigan taking on Central Michigan. Yeah, Joe, it's been a good run this week. Nine and three. Monday through Thursday, went three and one last night, had a couple winners in the NBA's one running really hot right now. Number one over the last 30 days, hitting 72% during that time. Eight and two our last 10 after both the Raptors and Spurs cashed last night. You mentioned the code that is power 25, P O W E R 25. That will save you 25% off any all access package from one day to a full year. So let's, uh, Keep the theme going now, guys, with the MAC, the Mid-American Conference. You heard Steve mention my alma mater, Ohio U. They have something in common with Central Michigan. Both of those teams have top four spots locked up for the upcoming tournament. I will be at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, Joe, on Friday for the semifinals. I'll leave you a ticket, as always, and we'll call. Ooh, I expect you'll yes. be there prompt at 6 p.m. tip-off. Oh, yes. Uh, but here's mm. the thing. Central Michigan has nothing to play for here. I know it's senior night. and you know, maybe that's some motivation. But the Chippewas are never this big of a favorite. This is the most points they've laid in any game all season. Now, what kept this off my card is the number has come down. On the screen right now, it says plus nine. I think it's all the way down to plus eight now. It was as high as mm. ten and a half this morning. So people, I think, like myself, recognize Central Michigan never in this price range to that point. When they visited Eastern Michigan earlier this year, the chips were four point dogs in Ypsilanti. Uh, they have not laid more than six to any opponent all season. Who was the team that they were favored by six against? How about Detroit Mercy, who is one of the worst teams in the country? Now, I'm not going to tell you that Eastern Michigan is a great team. They're not a great team. They're actually a bad team. But what did they do their last time out? How about win outright as a 21 point dog at Akron? That may cost the Zips an outright MAC title. Eastern Michigan, while they're bad, they have played a lot of close games recently. Three of the last four have been decided uh, by uh, three points or less. All of those have actually been wins uh, during that time. Central, they're only two and three straight up over their last five games. The two wins were by six and two points. Again, most points Central has laid in a game all year. Eastern, is there a bit of a letdown after the huge upset over Akron? potentially, but I've got to take the points, Joe, in what projects to be a low-scoring affair Friday night. Best bet, Eastern Michigan for the show. All right, so let me just say, uh, talk about pushing uh, steam here. Uh, it, as the words were coming out of uh, Brian Power's mouth, uh, it is now down to seven and a half. Uh, so it is now climbed down from nine to seven and a half and uh, doesn't look to be slowing down for Eastern Michigan. So. That is how you do it here, guys. And, oh, yeah, our friends from the Gold Sheet, they, too, have a best bet here tonight. They, too, have been on uh, quite the run. They're going to take a look at uh, University of uh, Illinois Chicago taking on Bradley, and they're going to take the 12 points here. 
There's a ton of dogs barking here today, if you guys are catching on. Seven out of the eight uh, Mo Valley teams to play in yesterday's first round, by the way, failed to score 64 points uh, in their games. And, of course, Illinois-Chicago went to double overtime last night with betters uh, all over Bradley, who had a bye yesterday. Now would be a good time, of course, to take advantage of the uh, that line movement here at plus 12. And it's very hard to shoot at the Enterprise Center. We know this. That's why this games or the games yesterday, of course, uh, were so low here. Expecting that here tonight and laying 12 in a low scoring game is always a uh, is always a risky proposition. So they're going to be taking on UIC. They'll take the points taking on Bradley here tonight. Make sure. You check out that right up along with uh, all the others that they have at goldsheet.com. Great information here, guys, for you. Uh, just to click away at goldsheet.com. And to recap it once again before these uh, Brian talks anymore and the line moves, uh, Eastern Michigan, nine when he started this show. Now seven and a half because that's how he rolls. Uh, Brian Leonard going ball state, taking the plus five. Uh, Merrill, like an Oral Roberts, the only chalk on the show today, ladies and gentlemen, double R, one L, is with Steve Merrill because our friends at the Gold Sheet, they've taken UIC plus 12 over Bradley. It feels like it could be a dog kind of night here, guys, and that's what we're thinking. So make sure you hit that thumbs up here, and of course, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're new to us here at wagertalk.com. We certainly do appreciate the time here and the support and like i said we've got plenty of other game previews and game breakdowns and best bets just a couple of clicks away here in fact click on the video that's on your screen right now and check out all the rest of the big games coming up not just today but all weekend long you have access to them here just go ahead and click on that video and then we'll see you again on monday as march madness gets a little bit closer good luck